Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're ready to solve the grazing goat problem. And you may say, well, what is the grazing goat problem? Well, it turns out that sometimes what we can do is we can have a, a circular enclosure and we can put a goat in there that's tied up to the edge of that circular enclosure where the string or the rope by which the goat is tied has a certain length, in this case, length A. The radius of the enclosure is R. As you can see that because of the limitation of the length of the string a uh, of length a the goat can only reach a certain portion of the total enclosure so the goat can only graze this portion of the enclosure the question is how much of an area does the goat have to eat the grass from and so that's kind of a similar problem as we did last time in the previous example what we can do is we can say all right let's take the enclosure and put it right here where the edge of the enclosure is right at the origin and then allow a circle to be represented by the area that the goat can graze Base also put the edge of the rope at the origin and then of course the goat could normally graze this much of an area but we only are concerned finding the area inside the enclosure so from that perspective it looks just like the previous video now you can see that if we're going to do a small area element right here like so then you can see that the first of all we need to integrate from here all the way to where the two meet and then there's an additional small area which we call a2 that has to be done differently because you can see that it's now hemmed in only by the curve over here let's call that the curve r2 and for the rest of the area for a1 here it's only limited by the curve r1 all right so we're going to attack it in the same way we're going to say that the total area is simply going to be the sum of a1 plus a2 now notice there's perfect symmetry between the top half and the bottom half so we're only going to integrate the top half and then multiply times 2 to get the entire area so now this is equal to area 1 we're going to use the general equation right here so we have 1 half times the integral we're going to integrate from theta equals 0 to where the 2 meet as defined by this angle phi so from 0 to phi of well, the function defined by r1, so it would be r1 squared d theta plus, oh, and also, since this only gives us the top half of the area, we need the bottom half of the area, so we need to multiply times 2. So here again, that would be 1 half times 2, because we're going to do the same for that little area and this little area down here, times the integral from phi all the way from there, all the way to the top, where the angle is pi over 2, and there that's defined by the other function r2 so here we get r2 squared times d theta so that that is how we can see that we're first taking these big sections of area right here and then the smaller sections of area added together now let's go ahead and plug in what these functions are so the two cancels out to one half so this is equal to the integral from zero to phi r1 squared r1 is a so that gives us a squared d theta plus that cancels out r sub 2 is defined by 2r cosine theta so that's integral from 0 oh, not from 0 from phi to pi over 2 and that gives us 2r times the cosine of theta quantity squared times d theta and I think my pen is kind of wearing thin here okay now we can already integrate this here we can factor that out and then we'll end up with the cosine square of theta so we have to find an identity to make that easier to integrate so this becomes equal to a squared times theta evaluated from zero to phi plus factoring out a 2r quantity squared that's 4r squared times the integral from phi to pi over 2 of the cosine square of d theta now the cosine squared can be written as 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta times d theta all right so now that makes it a little bit easier we can factor out a 1 half and then we can separate that in two separate integrals here when plugging the upper limit we end up with a squared phi plug in the lower limit to get 0 plus 2r squared times the first integral so the one half is gone now we have one times d theta so the integral of d theta from phi to pi over 2 plus 
the integral from phi to pi over 2 of the cosine of 2 theta times d theta. Notice I left a little space in there because we need the proper differential. We need a 2d theta, so I multiply times 2 and I divide by 2. And I close the bracket here. Now we can integrate both of those integrals. So let's come over here. So we have the area is equal to, we already have, an a squared times phi. If we integrate this, we get plus 2r squared times phi, oop, not phi, theta, because I'm integrating over d theta, so that's, I'm a little ahead here. So that's going to be theta evaluated from phi to pi over 2. And then here when we integrate this, we get plus 1 half or 1 half times 2r squared, that would be r squared, r squared times the sine of 2 theta, because the integral of the cosine is the sine, and the limits are going to be from phi to pi over 2. So now all we have to do is plug in our limits and see what we end up with. So the area is equal to a squared times phi. Plug in the upper limit, we get 2r squared times pi over 2. Plug in the lower limit, we get 2r squared times phi. All right? And then here, plug in the upper limit, 2 theta evaluated pi over 2, that's pi, the sign of pi is 0, so it would be plus 0, minus, plug in the lower limit, we get r squared times, yes, times uh, the sine of 2 phi. There we go. And now we probably want to clean that up a little bit if we can. Notice we see phi twice here. So we know that the area is equal to a squared minus 2r squared times phi plus the 2 cancel out, r squared times pi, and then minus r squared times the sine of 2 phi. And that's probably the simplest we're going to get this. And that would then be the area that the goat can reach. Sometimes this problem is given to you in such a way that r becomes equal to 1. And all you have to do then with the final answer is turn r into 1. So we end up with a squared minus 1 times phi. And here this becomes just pi minus the sine of 2 phi. Again, phi being defined by the ratio of a and r. And that's how we do the grazing goat problem.